Okay, so now we're going to talk about tachycardias. Okay, so the first thing we'll do is go over the guideline and then we'll talk about the reasoning about how some of these things came about. Tachycardia is defined as a heart rate greater than 150 beats per minute. This is different than the traditional definition, which is a heart rate greater than 100. And this distinction is made because any heart rate that is less than 150 tends to be sinus in origin and is probably due to some other cause, such as fever or dehydration or pain or, or anxiety. So the next step is to treat those other causes if they exist and place the patient on IV O2 monitor and an airway if necessary. And the next distinction you want to make is to decide whether they are unstable or not. And just like with the bradycardia, unstable is defined as hypotension or shock, acute heart failure, chest pain, or altered mental status. Now if a patient is unstable, then you need to shock them. And what this means here is synchronized cardioversion. And you might be asking, what is synchronized cardioversion and how does it differ from defibrillation? Let's say this is the rhythm you have here, it's tachycardic. What you want to do then is deliver the shock on one of these R waves. And not here on a T wave. If you put it on a T, you're going to get this R on T phenomenon. And you'll get a refractory V-fib. So you want to deliver the shock right on this R wave. Now that's not going to be possible to time manually. You're going to have to have the monitor do that. And so there's a special, and so there's a special button called sync, which will do it. And what you'll see on the monitor then is little dots at the top of each R wave. And it will only deliver the shock at these times and not here on these T waves. Now if for some reason you're not able to get these dots on there, if the monitor won't read them, then don't even try doing a cardioversion, just defibrillate them. Use the larger defibrillation doses. And we'll talk about these synchronized and cardioversion doses in just a bit. Now one more point, if the patient is awake, shocking someone is like hitting them in the chest with a baseball bat. So try to give them some sort of sedative and uh, pain medicine if you have an IV and if you have time. So if they're not unstable, now you have some time to act and you can get an EKG and take a look at it. And if the complexes, the QRS complexes are narrow, you're going to do something different than if they were wide. If they're narrow, you could try vagal maneuvers, adenosine, beta blockers, and calcium channel blockers. Now these drugs and maneuvers have the same action which is to slow down conduction through the AV node. Now if the QRS is wide, you want to use other drugs such as procainamide. You could try adenosine. This is a very short acting drug. And so even if it doesn't work well in this situation, it might be short acting and so not cause any harm. Amiodarone and sotalol. So these things we would do for wide complex. And if none of this works, then I'd probably call a cardiologist and figure it out. So let's look at this again. For our tachycardia, we have a heart rate greater than 150. The first thing you're going to do is treat any other things that might be causing the tachycardia. Pain, fever, hypotension. Put an IVO2 monitor and start getting an airway if needed. If the patient is unstable, and we know what unstable means, it's a hypotension or shock, heart failure, chest pain, or altered mental status. If they are unstable, then you need to shock them. And this is going to be synchronized cardioversion, right? And that means you're going to push the sync button on the monitor. If they are not unstable, then you have time to get an EKG, and you're going to see is it a narrow complex or a wide complex? If it's narrow, you can try vagal maneuvers such as Valsalva, pressing on the guy's eyeballs. 
and the stroke inducing carotid massage I say stroke inducing because you shouldn't do it don't do that adenosine beta blockers and calcium channel blockers if it is wide complex try procainamide adenosine amiodarone or sotalol so let's just go over some of the doses of these drugs uh, adenosine this is given at the first dose being six milligrams and you gotta flush it in fast because like I said this thing does not have a long half-life it, it is very short acting so you push it in and you flush it in immediately afterwards the patient is gonna feel horrible when this thing goes in and tell them they're gonna have the sensation that their heart is gonna stop or there's a heavy weight on their chest just prepare them for that the next dose is if this doesn't work then you can also try 12 milligrams and this could cause bronchospasm so watch out in asthmatics So there's many beta blockers available to you, metoprolol, propranolol, esmolol, and labetalol, though this last one is usually used more to control blood pressure than it is to control heart rate. Pick one and learn that one. The one that I tend to use is metoprolol, 5 milligrams. And of the calcium channel blockers, I use a non-dihydropyridine, so that's diltiazem or verapamil. Again, I say just pick one and learn that one. I tend to use diltiazem. Your first dose is going to be like 0 0.25 milligrams per kilogram. You're usually given about 20 milligrams of that. The second dose is going to be about 0 0.35 milligrams per kilo. And you can also put them on a drip. 5 milligrams a minute is where I start. And if you want to use verapamil, here are the doses. So it would be 2.5 to 5 milligrams given over 2 minutes. And then your next dose could be... 5 to 10 milligrams given every 15 to 30 minutes but you max out at 20 milligrams procainamine is started at 20 to 50 milligrams per minute and you keep that going until one of a couple things happens uh, either the arrhythmia stops there's a drop in blood pressure the QRS widens about 50 percent or 17 milligrams per kilo are given Adenosine, we talked about already. Remember, we put this in that AV nodal blocker group. Uh, the only reason it's safe to do here is because it's so short acting. These things do not block the AV node, and we'll see why that's important in the next video. The dose of amiodarone is 150 milligrams over 10 minutes, and you can repeat that. And sotalol is 100 milligrams over five minutes but be careful because this can also raise the increase the QT remember I told you that there's a button that you press on the monitor that sets it up into sync mode and when it's pressed a little red light will start up on it so if you have a narrow and regular rhythm like SVT or a flutter you can get away with 50 to 100 joules now if it's narrow and irregular this would be about 120 to 200 joules if it's biphasic if you have a biphasic to, uh, defibrillator we talked about that earlier or 200 joules if you have a monophasic one if it's wide and regular you can go for 100 joules and if that doesn't work, of course, you could go up from there. And if it's wide and irregular, just defibrillate them. Turn off the sync mode, crank it up to 360, and shock them. So this is the end of our first video, which kind of just goes through the algorithm. Let's get into a little bit more of the details in just a second about the rhythms and why we chose the drugs we did.